<laughs> Good afternoon. Well, we were all blessed to be here for Maurice's coming out. So. <laughs> I've been telling him for a while, he's next. <laughs> so we really appreciate the young man for standing up and speaking God's word. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yeah. All right, I'm going to do my best to talk as loud as I can. Uh, Brian gave me the, <laughs> the topic of blessing. I can hold it, yes. Matter of fact, I probably could hold this one. Thank you and take that one away. The blessing of having a nosy neighbor. <laughs> now we know that nosy comes with very negative connotations, right? And we think about somebody prying into our business and being intrusive and inquisitive, always want to know what's going on with you. And another term to describe being nosy is being curious. Yeah. I don't see curious necessarily as being nosy. A curious, nosy neighbor may be exactly what we need to have. Yeah. That's right. Obviously, the priest and the Levite who passed by on the other side of the man who had been robbed and beaten were not nosy or curious. Yeah. A Baptist preacher friend of mine in Cincinnati told me, he said, Jim, you know why they passed by on the other side? I said, why? He said, because they were prosperity preachers. <laughs> <laughs> and the man had already been robbed. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Now I didn't say that, he said that. <laughs> so the Samaritan, the good Samaritan that we may call nosy, was the least likeliest person to show compassion for the man who was on the, on the road uh, to Jericho, lying there beaten and bleeding and robbed. And as Brother Jones taught this morning, Samaritans uh, were considered a very low class of people yes. by the Jews. Yeah. And uh, the Samar this particular Samaritan did not consider the man's race or the religion. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just went over to help him. Because right. y'all, it's not about race, right. it's about grace. Second Corinthians 8 talks about us having to excel in this grace mm -hmm. called giving. Mm -hmm. Giving is a grace. Amen. And uh, this Samaritan was truly, truly that. He only saw a person who was in dire straits. Mm -hmm. That's what he saw. And he went above and beyond the minimum that was required. He didn't pass by on the other side. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Huh? They might get me, you know. But you know, we've done this in our history too. And not so long ago, those of you who are old enough might remember a case in New York City where a lady named Kitty Genovese beaten and stabbed multiple times right on the sidewalk in broad daylight in New York City. And people walked by and didn't do anything. Didn't do a thing. You remember that Brother White? Yeah. And uh, in the early 90s, even where I used to live in Cincinnati, there was uh, an attack on a bus driver in, the, in daylight by some uh, teenagers. People on the bus didn't do anything. People outside on the sidewalk didn't do anything. So to me, they weren't nosy enough. Amen. You have to be nosy sometimes to be able to do what you need to do Amen. to help somebody. Amen. So this good Samaritan, he saw need. And he uh, went to the man's aid. 
And you know what he did in today's uh, parlance? He put some peroxide and some gauze on the man's womb. Amen. And then he put the man in his porch. Mm -hmm. And he checked him into a holiday inn right. for a few days so he could heal. Yeah. And he paid for his room with his own money. And then he went beyond the bounds of human decency, common decency rather, and told the hotel clerk at the Holiday Inn, give him some room service. Yeah. <laughs> Take good care of him. Right. And if I, if, if I owe any more, if he owes any more, if he eats a little much on his room service, don't worry, I'll be back and I'll pay for it. Can you imagine anybody doing that today? <laughs> Maybe some of us, but uh, that some would be few. But that kind of sets the, the, the frames in today's world for what this man did back then on the road to Jericho. Um, as Maurice said, that Samaritan saw this man as his neighbor. That's right. He didn't go up to him and say, are oh, you a Republican or a Democrat? That's right. well, right. He didn't walk over there and say, are oh, you a Jew? Mm -hmm. And it was, you can infer that he was, that the man uh, was a Jew because he was on his way from Jerusalem mm -hmm. to Jericho. That's right. But the Samaritan didn't worry about that. He didn't ask him anything. So a nosy neighbor can be a blessing. And I'll add to that. Should be a blessing. Y'all remember, I keep going back, that uh, TV show 227. The lady in the window all the time knew everything that was going on. Then there was another uh, brother wearing on uh, Living Color. Ber Bernita. Uh, Don't be talking about Miss Jenkins. <laughs> she was nosy. She knew everything. Yeah. But she gossiped. Because yeah. she tells somebody on and say, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> so she was nosy. But she wasn't a good nosy neighbor. She liked to gossip. <laughs> uh, so we can be good or we can be bad. And I would much rather have a nosy neighbor who is curious and concerned about me rather than one who just wants to, to gossip. So the Samaritan not only saw the man on the side of the road, but he stopped to help him. And we had an elder in Cincinnati, Brother Ron Wright. He used to uh, teach all the time, do the right thing for all the right reasons all the time. So if you stop and help somebody, you, you shouldn't do it out of uh, obligation or I'm compelled or I really don't want to do it, but I'll do it. Do it for the right reasons. Because right. if you do the right, the right thing for the wrong reasons, as Maurice alluded to, it goes for naught. So we have to do the right thing for the right reasons. And if being nosy is about watching out for other people, like if you had a fire and you didn't know it, or somebody was breaking into your, into your house and you didn't know it, you want to have a nosy neighbor, Amen. a good one, Brother Cowan, yes, who will call you or let somebody know that there is something wrong. And we would all do good. You know those signs they have out in front of your yard uh, ADT and what's the other alarm companies you stick them in the ground and uh, we'd be good to have one that says warning these premises are under surveillance by a nosy neighbor <laughs> <laughs> yeah put that sign out there yeah. somebody's watching you you know so a good nosy neighbor does the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Simple as that. Uh, I gave Maurice about five minutes of my time. So I'm going to move fast and get through. 
I knew he needed more than 15 minutes. <laughs> a good nosy neighbor checks to see if you are all right. A good nosy neighbor sees you don't have a car and asks you, what can I bring you from the store? A good nosy neighbor is behind you in the grocery store checkout line and you $2 short. And that nosy neighbor says, oh, I bet. You don't have to put anything back. A good nosy neighbor sees that you have a problem and he or she butts in to help you with your problem. <clears throat> That's the blessing of having a good, nosy neighbor. So the lawyer, go, go to him for a moment. He was so filled with hate and, and trying to impress and trying to be intellectual and trying to chick, uh, trick Jesus. And you know, hate can make us stubborn and resistant. Amen. And even to the truth, even if we know the truth, mm -hmm. it can make us that way. So uh, Jesus asked him, so which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the victim? Mm -hmm. And what did the lawyer say? He couldn't even bring himself to say the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. What did he say? The good man was the one who uh, showed mercy. Right. Instead of saying, oh, the Samaritan. He couldn't even say the word because wow. that hate inside of them for Samaritans mm -hmm. kept him from going all the way and admitting who was the good person, mm -hmm. who was the neighbor. Mm -hmm. So we can't let hate uh, keep us from doing and saying what we ought. Jesus told the lawyer to go and do likewise. <laughs> In other words, he should start living what the law told him, tells him to do. And we have to take that same, that same lesson. So by ending the encounter, uh, we, 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 Jesus is telling us to follow whose example? The Samaritans. Amen follow his example and understand who is our neighbor and what our obligations are to our neighbor. We have to show compassion and love for other people. And that's what this man did. He showed compassion and, and love. And he was curious enough to make him do something good. Uh, Book of James chapter 2 verse 13 says, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. And then if you drop down to verse 15, it says this. If a brother or a sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you say to him, go in peace, be warmed, be filled, and yet you don't give him what's necessary for, their, for his body, what use is that? That's right. Again, we're used to walking on by, oh man, that's so sad. I hope things work out for you. And you ain't dropped a couple of dollars in the man's pocket or the woman's purse. You know, it's, it, it's empty. And uh, we're taught that right there in the book of James. So we have to love one another, brothers and sisters, regardless of race, or religion, because I, I said, it's not about race, it's about grace. Amen. And we have to give grace as well. <clears throat> if someone needs something that we have, that we can supply them with, then we should give it generously and freely, mm -hmm. without any expectation right. of getting something back. That's right. Amen. Do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Amen. So the lessons in this parable of the Good Samaritan are threefold. Number one, we are to set aside our prejudice and show love and compassion Amen. for other people. That's right. Number two, our neighbor is anyone that we encounter. You said that this morning, Brother Joan. We're all creatures of the same creator. That's right. And we 
should love all mankind as Jesus taught us to do. Amen. And number three is keeping the law in its entirety with the intent to save ourselves is an impossible task. It was under the old law and we can't buy our way uh, into heaven under this one. Amen. There's nothing we can do to get to heaven. No work, not enough work. Mm -hmm. But because we are saved, right. we should be willing to do the work and right. to do the, the good things. Mm -hmm. Not because we are trying to be saved, but because we are. Amen. But God gave us the grace Amen. up front, said, okay, I got you. Amen. Now, what are you going to do? That's right. <clears throat> so I remember those uh, statements. The uh, topic today is like a good neighbor, the church is there. Right. I thought about the other two. Nationwide is on your side. Yeah. So is God. Right. And you rather have him on your side than nationwide. Yeah. And you in good hands with who? Uh -oh. God. Yeah. They say all say that's that's nice. Yeah. But you in good hands with God. Yeah. So we can use those uh, uh, phrases that we're all familiar with. We see on TV. Just when you see it, think about it. Just put God in here instead of Amen. the insurance companies. Because what I, know, what I know about insurance companies, I hope there are no agents in here who take this wrong. <laughs> but uh, they need a talker to. <laughs> and the pharmaceutical companies. They need a talker to. So in order to reach those neighbors that we talk about, you have to go where they are. Yeah. Brother Jones talked about Jesus going through Samaria. He didn't avoid it. He said, I'm going through. Right. Met the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. And oh, I think it was Luke 9 where he went through and James and was it James and John said, they don't accept you and they don't like you. You want us to bring down fire and kill them? <laughs> was that it? And he said, no, don't do that. So even his, his apostles, you know, had that same, they were brought up that way. So, uh, but he knew he had to go there to meet them where they were. So uh, the application for us is to, <clears throat> in our evangelism, to reach people for Christ, we have to go where they are. Amen. We have to be willing to do that. And comfort is not the issue, y'all. The firefighter who goes up to put the fire at your house, if you're in there, he doesn't stand on the other side of the street and say, come on out, your house is burning. Come on out before you get hurt. Come on out before your fire burns down. He comes in there to get you. Jesus went through Samaria. The Samaritan went to the man who was beaten and robbed. We have to do the same thing as we live our lives. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, listening and, and participating today. And thank you, Brother Jones, for another opportunity to share God's word.